<laughs> Good luck with this one, Bob. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Diamond and Hedden. Welcome to a special, very special episode of the Blunt Press Special. Uh, my name is Bob, as with me is my co-host, Nate. What's going on? And today we have a very special segment, it's called the Blunt Press Special Presents Old Bar Stories. Uh, I... <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. I have a gentleman with me. His name's Tom, and uh, we're cohort together. And uh, we, uh, I thought we should record some of his uh, old stories from uh, kind of his older d- days or younger days uh, from just old bar stories that told me I thought deserved to be chronicled. So, uh, Tom, say hello. Hello. All right, Tom. <laughs> And like I said, like, uh, we, we stayed up one night and he was telling me a bunch of old stories about uh, just crazy stuff he's gotten into. And uh, like I said, we, I thought uh, they should be chronicled. Uh, I guess Tom... Uh, chronicled. Chronicled, yeah, that's a good term. It's like, an interesting choice of words there, Bob. Yeah, to be permanently <laughs> archived in the interwebs. Just like... <laughs> so, uh, Tom, uh, why don't you start off with that story? I believe it was... Um, you know, let's start off with the old man fight. The old man fight. Yeah, the old man fight. Or do you want to start off with a girl, then lead into the old man fight? The... Well, actually, let's 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 do this for you, Bob. Uh, let's start with I'm an old fuck now, and I don't really care anymore what other people think. So, uh, when you're young, you should have all the enjoyment in life that you possibly can. Now, most of this involves. Going to bars, looking for women, doing other things, whatever you're doing, have fun. But if you get to be my age and you don't have at least 10 good (laughs) bar stories, then you've wasted all that alcohol for nothing. (laughs) So, on that note, I I was a professional drunk, and when I say professional, I drank a lot of booze and, and did a lot of shit. So I don't remember a lot of things, which is unfortunate for you, because I'm sure there's a lot more stories that would be interesting. But uh, I think we're going to start with the old man story that Bob's referring to. Uh, It's not really a bar story. It's a story about um, the skanky bitch. Sorry if that's offensive language. No, 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 it's it's fine. If if the language offends you, (laughs) then then I will... Go fuck yourself. (laughs) Our our, our, our listeners aren't the... um, Upper crust? They're not the upper, upper crust type, so I think they're, uh, they're, they're they're familiar with skanky bitches. And if they are, yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's cool. All right, good job. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're slumming it up, though, you know, just with their uh, auditorily slumming it up. Anyway, continue. For the records, the skanky bitch that, that I'm referring to here, uh, her name was Kimberly. She's dead, so she can't sue you, and I don't care. She can't find me, I hope. Uh, I'll be with her shortly. Uh, I went out with this chick i worked at a bar and uh the the bar was a seedy bar in san antonio it was not a very nice bar uh during the daytime it was a a mainly retired and older Mm -hmm. folks bar and at night it switched to mainly younger uh, and some older uh hispanic crowds so there was a shift between about 5 and 8 p.m where there was a mingling of older white people And uh, younger Hispanic crowds led to a lot of interesting situations. But uh, I was was working this bar, and this younger chick came in. When I say younger, she was 40 at the time. I was about 30. (laughs) And I say younger because all the other women in the place were, like, in their 60s, okay? So, Ah, uh, you you know, someone walking in, and she's 40 years old, (laughs) hey, I'll do that. (laughs) Uh, Versus, wow, she's 60. No, I'm not that desperate yet. It's like, oh, my God, the meat flaps on her. Holy shit. (laughs) I think you shook something loose there, Tiger. (laughs) So... So Kim comes in with this with this other guy, and he's an older guy, and you know, like I think he was about fifty. I don't know, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, she she sits down and she starts flirting with me, and I'm kind of stupid and oblivious to that because I work at a bar where there's older ladies, and you know they flirt, but it's innocent. You don't take it serious, and she's flirting with me, and I get her a drink and get this dude Fred his his drink and go about my business and she keeps flirting with me and I'm just sitting there and I'm like doing my job, you know, whatever. And I, at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, I think 
she was flirting with me, so I guess she's not with that dude. It just seems awkward. Well, she comes in the bar again another time by herself, and she represents to me that, that no, nah, he's just a friend. That's fine. Well, it turns out that that friend and her live together, and he thinks they're more than friends, and she tells everyone they're not, which, eh, That's whatever. unfortunate. Yeah, and unfortunate for most people. I didn't care. <laughs> um <laughs> I, I, I still have low morals on and, and certain things, and, and one of my one of my things is that I don't believe in, in in infidelity. But to have infidelity, you have to have a committed relationship to start with. So uh, if if someone's telling you they're not with someone, then I don't think that you're cheating. You know, that's between them and whoever. Either way, yeah. So we we go out, um, things get heated up. She, we go to her house. And she doesn't tell me she lives with this old fuck at the time. <laughs> her sugar and, daddy. Yeah, her sugar daddy is basically what it was. And we're in her bedroom, and she's riding me, and she fucking goes ape shit crazy. And um, she, we're having great sex, is, is, is the best way for me to put it. Uh, she jumps off me in the middle of the sex while she's having an orgasm and freaks out because she has not had an orgasm in like 10 years. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I've never had a woman jump off me in the middle of sex. I'm thinking, what the fuck's wrong with me? Did she start like stomping around? I'm like, no, yeah, she... I'm the winner. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> well, mm, mm. So, so anyway, this Kim jumps off me and the door... Someone knocks on the door, and then I'm, like, really paranoid. I'm like, what, am I getting fucking set up here? What the hell? Is this where the dude comes in with the chainsaw and kills me? I mean, and he, it's this old dude, Fred, and he's like, Hey, can you at least keep it down in there if you're going to fuck in my house? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, this is un- uncomfortable and awkward. Is that your dad? <laughs> and I, was, that's, I was like, um, who's that? And she's like, oh, that's my roommate, Fred. Don't worry. I mean, it's none of his business if we fuck. And I was like, apparently it is. It's keeping him up. <laughs> anyway, so the, the bottom line is me and this girl go out for a while. Um, off and on, she likes to make people jealous. And I realize afterwards she used me to really piss off Fred all the time. No, I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> a- anyway, um, we break up and he comes to my house one day with her to pick up some of her shit. She had this little egg vibrator. And uh, she got her shit, and she left this little egg vibrator at my house. So I was like, hey, be, if you're going to leave, make sure you take this shit, too. I'm sure you're going to need it, Fred, because you can't satisfy her any other way. <laughs> Something along this. It was enough to piss the dude off to where he tried to throw it through my window. Uh, that kind of pissed me off. I went back out. I, I was 32, and he's in, like, early 50s. So, like, when he tried it, did he just kind of hit, hit the side and fall off? No, it, he, like, threw it, but he was, like, 50 feet away. You know, he threw it at the window or whatever, Hell and yeah. it bounced off the window, and I was pissed. I was like, you motherfucker, come to my house, start <laughs> shit, Sorry. throw... I, you know, I wasn't thinking, you know, I, I, thought I was he, a prick. He was, like, out right out your window and, like, uh, and no. just kind of, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't that old and frail, but I like that. You, you, you practice that one. <laughs> Yeah. So you throw it like an old lady, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I got pissed and I went back out to the vehicle, and Kim and her daughter and him were all in the vehicle. And I think this is what I was telling you, Bob. If if you're ever ever approached by the cops, whatever, don't say <laughs> shit. The more you talk, the more you're going to get fucked. Even if you tell them the truth, no matter what, the more you talk, the more you get fucked. And this is a good example. I should have been in jail that night. Most people think I should be. I mean, you listen to the story, you tell me. So, anyway, Fred's in his car. And I go, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And he decides to grow a pair of balls. And he gets out of his car with his Coors. He'd like to drink Coors. Not Coors Light, the original Coors. Ah. Mm. Distinctive feature about the individual. I appreciate that in someone who, you know, likes what he likes. But he gets out of his car, and he has his Coors in his hand. And he, like, starts walking towards me like he's going to start some shit. I was like, dude, get back in your car and get the fuck out of here because I will beat your ass. And you throw anything else at my window, I'm going to fucking kill you. Of course, he's in front of Kim, who now he has to impress. I don't know how anyone in their right mind thinks getting their ass kicked impresses someone. But <laughs> so he takes a swing at me with this cores in his hand. He swings his 
his fist with a beer in it so hard that I blocked it and the beer went over like an eight foot fence. <laughs> I mean, it flew into the pool area, <laughs> but I was pissed at that point. I was like, you motherfucker, you really going to give me an excuse to beat your ass? Cool. <laughs> so I grabbed Fred and kind of threw him over his car door. I ran him back to his car door. It was open. And, um, I was pushing him through the car window. His car window was down. I pushed him through the door of his and the window of his door, and uh, I was kind of pissed. I was like, "You, you fuck with me, I will hurt you. Just stay there. Don't fuck with me anymore." I wasn't really happy with that. Um, apparently, after I pushed him through the car door, his feet were still in the window while his was legs. And I, so I grabbed his shoe and I pulled his shoe off of his foot. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a dick when you do things like this. But, you know, that's what the story's about. Would, being a dick and enjoying life. Would you say you were mildly perturbed? <laughs> yes, mildly <laughs> perturbed would be the, But, officer, he assaulted me. So I took the fucker's shoe and I threw it and hit him in, the, in his face with it. And I started to get up and walk off. And I was like, don't come fuck with me again. And I was like, okay, that's over. Good enough. You know, he didn't have to get hurt too bad. This fucking old dude hasn't had enough. He decides he wants to get up and come and fight me. I'm walking back to my apartment, and he gets up, and he's like, Come here, I'm going to fuck you up. It's like, dude, okay, you can't, you didn't succeed in swinging a punch. How are you going to fuck me up? And he starts walking towards me. By this time, there's some neighbors, you know, come out to watch the entertainment, you know. Hey, look, it's Tom out there fucking up someone else tonight. <laughs> hey, let's see how this one ends. You got a free show. <laughs> yeah. So he comes towards me, and I hadn't punched someone with a closed fist in probably like 10 years. And I forgot how good it felt. I usually used open hands and, you know, just subdued someone or, or hurt them enough to let them know that, you know, hey, this isn't going to be profitable for you. So... Here, here comes old Fred, and he's walking up on me, and I was like, dude, you better stop. I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> so I punched him in his face really hard. I mean, this is a jab, but, I mean, it was hard enough for me to feel the cartilage in his nose break, and <laughs> it was a good feeling. I mean, I, I had not felt someone's cartilage in their nose shatter before, so I was just like, wow, that felt good. And I was like, I need to punch people more often. No. Um, yeah, you're fucked up. Yeah. It, uh, avoid that guy, Tom, in any bars. Luckily, he doesn't drink anymore, so you don't have to worry about this. But, um, so, he steps back, and, you know, he's kind of stunned, but he's obviously drunk and rubber-faced, and he's like, that didn't hurt so much. I'll come forward again. <laughs> and he comes forward a second time, and I was like, damn, I just nailed this dude square on, and he... He just walking right back for a second one. He's got that old man strength. Yeah, and so I nailed him again, and I was like, "Beard up, <laughs> like a willow." Him, smacked him again. His nose broke. His nose is bleeding. I was like, "Wow, that felt good." I felt it crunch a second time, and I was like, "So I'm like, dude, I don't want to have to hurt this dude." And I'm, I'm kind of laughing about it because I'm like, "Well, you've already hurt him. Uh, apparently, you might just have to take him to the ground and, and choke him out." And I start to back up, and the Rinnepig for, I'm sorry, Rinnepig is the term I use for the school district police officer who was <laughs> overweight and got his ass kicked by a high schooler who lived in my apartment complex. <laughs> but uh, and I apologize if you happen to be a professional police officer or even a school police officer, if the term Rinnepig offends you, this guy certainly was a Rinnepig. <laughs> He's upstairs. His job there as security at the apartments is to protect the clients of the apartments, the people like me who paid rent. Instead, he's telling me, if you hit him again, I'm going to shoot you in the head. And I turn around and looked at the dude. He's about 75 feet away. And I told him, basically, fuck you, you couldn't shoot me if you tried. You fucking dude probably couldn't get his gun out of his holster because he's too fat to reach it. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? If I hit him again, I'm backing up. The dude's approaching me. What part of this can you not see? Anyway, Fred keeps coming. He gets a third punch, and this time it's it's more than enough for him. I, I hit him. The, the first two were jabs. I mean, they weren't like sissy punches, but they weren't like, I'm going to give him all I got. The third one, I was like... 
fuck it, man. Uh, apparently, I'm a pussy. I can't hurt him enough to, to make him stop. So I'll, I'll give him an all out. So I laid him out. And then I walk back to my apartment. Of course, Mr. Renapig comes running down there and you get, you get, let me put these cuffs on you. We you let you put them on me. <laughs> fuck you. Is this what you normally do with students? I guess that's why you got your ass whooped by one. <laughs> like, yeah, you're going to arrest me. Whatever. I didn't do shit wrong. I'll wait for the cops. The cops get there. And, you know, it doesn't look good. I'm like 32 years old. This dude's in his early 50s. Uh, but he came to my house and he fucked with me. So I'm like, yeah, I fucked him up. Um, what of it? Is there a law against defending yourself? Why'd you come out of your house? Um, he threw something at my window. It pissed me off. I wasn't going to stand there and let him break my window. I came out, confronted him. He got froggy. He got his ass beat. Now, while we were fighting, let me rephrase that. He did make a couple of swings and he grazed, you know, my face a little bit. It didn't hurt me. Uh, the only mark on me was apparently when I pushed him through the window. We were both smoking at the time, and his cigarette burned the tip of my nose. So, yes, I did have a mark on me. Thank you, Mr. Police Officer, for going, well, you have no marks on you. Oh, wait, you got a little sc scratch or something on your nose. Yeah, see, I'm innocent. How the <laughs> fuck does that make it any different? But that's, you know, hey, the cops, oh, well, yep, you, you, you've got marks on you. It was mutual combat. I'm sitting in the back of the cop car waiting, and... The cops come and ask me the dumbest fucking questions I've ever heard. I tell my sister, I say, hey, go call Annie. Tell her I ain't coming into work tomorrow. Apparently, I'm going to be in jail over this shit. So I'm sitting in the back of the car, car going, yeah, fuck it. If you go to jail for something and, you know, shit happens, I'm like, I ain't got nothing. I, I don't feel bad about this. Shit, you know, it's not like I ran up to him and just beat him on the street for nothing. He came to my house. So I'm sitting in the back of the cop car, and the cops keep coming and asking me the dumbest fucking questions. What shirt were you wearing? What the fuck does that matter? <laughs> when they first came to my house, I wasn't wearing a shirt. Uh, they knocked on the door, asked for the shit I put on a shirt or whatever. But the bottom line is, is they each one of them told the cops different stories, and when the cops got together, all their stories didn't mix. And what flashed brilliance to the cops that their stories didn't mix is that apparently I was wearing three different shirts at the time. <laughs> I don't know how that makes any sense, but the cops like keeps asking. I'm like, what the fuck does it matter? He's like, just tell us what you were wearing. I was like, uh, I wasn't wearing a shirt. Um, and after they beat on my door and I went back out to confront him about throwing that at my window, I was wearing the shirt I'm wearing now. So you weren't wearing a green shirt? You weren't wearing a red shirt? What the fuck does that matter? What? Anyway, the bottom line is is the, the three monkeys that all told the cops different stories. And I'm like, look, I can prove he swung at me. His beer with his fingerprints on it is sitting in the pool. He swung at me. I blocked it. It knocked his beer over the, the fence. How else would it get there? And I'm like, and, and besides, why are you fucking with me? Obviously, the dude's drunk and he drove here. Why don't you take his ass down for fucking drug, you know... Anyway, so after about an hour of sitting in the back of the cop car, um, the cops come and let me go. End of story there, but the best part is I'm at work a few days later and a detective calls me <laughs> and says, Hey, do you know <laughs> Yeah, who the fuck are you? Uh, you know, call my work, ask him for me, and he doesn't even say my name right, of course, so... Ooh, we're going to have to edit this. Yeah. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, that's not real fucking brilliant of you. <laughs> you know, how this? We're, we're going to have to go just, in. Just keep yeah, going. Just going. Just keep going. We're going to have to put, like, the beep. Like, yeah. what, what, we've, been, we've been planning to do a, a uh, protected witness episode anyway. So oh, excellent. Just, uh, just let it roll. To, uh, Tom. Tom. Not, not so, a problem. So... So this fucking detective calls me at work and says, hey, you know, that I'm like, who the fuck are you? You know, and of course, that doesn't sound nice. But when you work in a bar and you've nailed a lot of people's girlfriends and they <laughs> call you and pissed off about it, I'm like, yeah, I'm so and so. Who, what, what the fuck do you want to know? And the cop's like, well, you know, were you involved in an incident with the, this Fred guy? And. Yeah, I kicked his ass the other day. <laughs> you, why aren't you in jail? I, I don't know. I, you're the cops. Ask your friends who were there. <laughs> He's like, well, you know you heard him. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, 
it, it turns out the guy actually cracked a couple of ribs when I fo- forced him over the the uh, car door, and he was so drunk he didn't feel it at the time. And he still kept coming. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, is that my fault? See what happens when we drink coolers and fucking uh, uh, wine coolers and shit. Yeah, yeah. Makes I mean, you is it, so he was taking his, uh, or is it Zima? <laughs> Zima, there you go. Zima will do that shit. I know, because I... usually his Zima. He uses it to wash down his calcium supplements, you know, just a... <laughs> yes. So anyway, the, the bottom line for that story... Mix it with Metamucil. Um, that, that's the old man getting his ass kicked. But here's, here's how fucked up my life was at that time, and still is actually in a lot of ways. Kim, the girl who caused all this shit, feels bad because I fucked up Fred, who she had drive to my house, and she knew I was going to fuck him up if he fucked with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she picks me up and in his car, this is cause she used his car too. Oh, yes. Her sugar daddy. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing coming over here in Fred's car? You know, that's like a big fucking flash to me. If I see this car, I'm going to fuck up whoever's getting out of it. <laughs> and <laughs> she, she pulls up in his car and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, can we talk? I'm like, I'm pretty sure we're finished talking when you had Fred come over here and get his ass kicked at my house the other day. <laughs> I feel bad about that. It- but I wanted you to see something. What do you want me to see? Just get in the car where she drives me to the fucking hospital that he's in the emergency oh, room man. at. <laughs> yes, you, you got to love this. And I'm like, why the fuck am I here? And she's like, I just want you to see how bad you hurt Fred. And I'm like, why do I care? And I'm, <laughs> then I'm starting to feel bad. I am because I have some some Empathy. feelings. Yeah. A little bit. Not much. But I'm like, okay. So, yeah, I'll apologize to the dude maybe. But, I mean, he came to my house. He gets what the fuck he gets. I walk into the emergency room, and poor Fred is sitting there, you know, doesn't have insurance, and is waiting there, obviously, at least two hours, because that's how long it took her to get me there. I'm pretty sure she left as soon as she dropped him off. Fucker's sitting in the emergency (laughs) room. Fuck it, his nose is swollen like the... (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I fucked up his nose. So what? I didn't know he had cracked ribs or whatever. That's my work. Yeah, that, that's me. Hey, everybody, that's my work. <laughs> I, I walk in. I ain't afraid to punch an old man. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I walk into the bar. I'm sorry, I walk in, into the ER, and he's sitting there, and Kimberly calls him or whatever, and he turns around, and I swear the poor dude was about to have a heart attack. I think he thought I was there to finish him off. <laughs> he starts freaking, and, uh, and so security, you know, they're like, and I'm like, I think, he's here for me. I'm not going to go fuck with the dude, but I think, you know, they're like, so why are you here? I'm like, she asked me to come. I don't, you know, it's one of those fucked up situations. (laughs) The bottom line is, if you're going to go fuck around with skeezy, skanky women who have sugar daddies that they live with, (laughs) you have to have two things in mind. Number one, don't do it. First of all, it's the pussy really isn't that good, but, um, and that pussy was worth fighting over sometimes, (laughs) but not, um, on occasion. On occasion. Um, <laughs> Just be prepared to pay for it. Yeah, be prepared to yeah. pay for it. And if you're going to be the sugar daddy for a skank that likes to watch men fight over her... Just know that if she's fucking a young dude because the young dude can fuck better than you, he can probably fight better than you. <laughs> so don't go there. Just let it go and find some old skanky pussy that isn't as good. <laughs> uh, a little more loyal. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more loyal. So that concludes the first episode of Bar Stories and Stupidity. I'm going to take a short break here if you want to put this on pause. No, you need to you yeah. take, yes, right, we'll take a break. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. We can yeah, fire right. up another one. Cool, we can so, do that. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, before, before I do that, Senior Bob, do you have any questions or anything else that you would like me to elaborate on? No, I, I think we're going <laughs> to okay. save that for the next episode. Actually, uh, I was kind of curious the entire time. Was it was it a can of Coors or was it the old bottle? No, it was a can. Oh, okay. And, 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 an old Tall Boy or something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but was it in a paper bag? <laughs> no, it was, it, was, like. it was not in a paper bag. I remember this guy, actually. He, he, he would buy his Coors, and he was mad because when he'd go to the bar, we didn't sell the original Coors there. So he drank Genuine Draft. I was like, oh, cool, he drinks Genuine Draft. That's what I drank at the time. And he was like, no, I like Coors, but I'll settle for Genuine Draft. I was like, okay, well, that's, you know, whatever. Because like. a Genuine Draft is for peasants. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, obviously. <laughs> So, back onto that though. Before I before I go take my break, then I I guess um, so that that leads us up to 
to basically the, the situation in my life at the time. Uh, I was young and single and worked two jobs. One of them was at a bar. Uh, the main reason I worked at the bar was I didn't wasn't working there for, for money. I was working there to help out the owner. Felt bad for her and uh, was a regular customer at her bar. And she knew I'd worked uh, for Fridays before, not as a bartender. I worked as a bar back, but... Uh, um, Friday's bartenders are real bartenders. You know, they can actually mix drinks and shit and remember stuff you know, for me. <laughs> what? You, you want a fucking beer? Okay, hold on. That's hard enough already. You want a fucking glass too? Shit, what do you think this is, a bar? I mean, so, I mean, that that's really the type of bar that I worked at. Uh, it's, it's, it's like, what do you think this is, the Titanic? Yeah. <laughs> with the shit. Oh, you want a clean glass? Oh, yeah. that's going to be a little nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, you just dip your balls in there. <laughs> yeah, it's Hold clean. On. <laughs> just got to... Uh, All right. So anyway, so the the bar that I was working at, they didn't even have a uh, a blender. That's the type of bar it was. They're like, <laughs> I want that frozen. Look, you get it on the rocks or you get no ice. There is no frozen here, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I'll give you a frozen stare. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> Come on. I can uh, throw a bunch of ice in the air <laughs> or salt in the ice. And, and, and while we're on that, I'll, I'll go into this before I take my break just because you said you wanted to hear some bar stories. I was working the bar, and this is in the day when mainly older people came in, retired people, and three young women is what we will call them <laughs> in this politically correct day and age. Uh, three young ugly women with Adam's apples Ooh. came mm. in. Well, two of them had Adam's apples. The other one, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, they were hustling this old man for beers, and I felt bad about it. But I'm like, you know, dude, that's your problem if you're buying them beers. Because um, you tip based off of how much you buy, so you just keep buying. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, one of them comes up and goes, do you have a light? And I threw her a book of matches. I say her, him, whatever. It doesn't matter. And she got really mad and said... How rude. In New York, a man lights a lady cigarette. And I was mad. And I was like, yeah, in Texas, women don't have Adam's apples. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently, even saying that out loud did not let the old fuck who was enticed by the fact that three chicks were hitting on him. Uh, hey, dude, this ain't right. Don't... You need to be going on. Anyway, just one of those funny bar stories. I'm like, yeah. And, and of course, the people I worked with, um, they're like, even now where I work, they're like, dude, how can you get away with being so rude to people? I'm like, what do you mean? You know, I told him he had an alarm. It went off. He didn't know the password. I can't help him. How's that rude? Well, you make it sound like you're calling him an idiot. Well, if he's an idiot, and that's what I'm telling him, you know. <laughs> But apparently, I've, I've always been short that way. So apparently, telling a cross dresser that they uh, they're they're not a female is is rude. And on that note, this yeah. session is over. Let, let's we'll wrap it up. Good timing. Excellent actually, stretched timing. it out just just right. Just right, actually, perfect. Yeah, excellent. All right. Well, uh, Tom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, Tom will be back uh, next week for the next episode of, we're going to call it just stories from an old dick. That's what we're going to start calling them. <laughs> yes, and, an old uh, dick. Like us on Facebook, like us on the Twitters and whatever. <laughs> like us, subscribe us, enjoy us. Uh, Nate. What's up? Uh, Later. My buddy Tom. <laughs> and my name's Bob. Thank you for listening and have a good evening. <laughs> God damn it, Bob. So, Bob, is this where we get the hookers? <laughs> well, That'd be kind of nice. That'd be kind of awesome. <laughs>